On Thursday the 8th of November, six days before it launched Operation Pillar of Cloud, Israel killed 13-year-old Ahmed Yunus Abu Dagger, also known as Hamid. He was killed right here while he was playing football with his friends. He died on the way to hospital. This man, Saleh, witnessed Hamid's death. Hamid was shot in his stomach and he ran towards the steps of his home. We took him to the hospital in a car, but he died on the way. At the time, my crew and I were filming a few hundred meters away, near the Israeli-imposed no-go military zone, investigating an incursion into Gaza. This is the buffer zone. We are greeted with the sounds of helicopters and Israeli drones. This is an Israeli tank, part of that incursion, just hundreds of meters away from Hamid's home. We heard live fire at the time Hamid was killed and ran to cover. We had no idea Israel had killed an innocent. I visited Hamid's school to speak to two boys who were playing with him when he was killed. On Thursday we were playing football and suddenly I heard Hamid screaming and shouting, my stomach, my stomach, and then we saw him run to his home while holding his stomach. He started to call out for his mum. His brother was there who started asking us, what's wrong with Hamid? So I answered him that they shot him in his stomach. He was shocked and said, you mean Hamid? I answered yes. Then the car came to take him. As recent history has shown, nowhere in Gaza is safe for Palestinians, but Hamid's family home in Abbasan Khan Yunus is just a few hundred meters from the military buffer zone with Israel. Its horizons under constant domination by Israel's surveillance balloons. It's one of the least secure places to live in Gaza, but for the large Abu Dhabi family, it's simply always been their home. It was my shift that night at the hospital. Suddenly we heard the noise of shelling and shooting because the hospital is close to the east, near the border with Israel. After five minutes, a casualty arrived to the hospital. He was a child and we immediately started treating him. When we took him, we could see that he appeared to be dead. We massaged his heart and gave him drugs like adrenaline and a drip to try to restart his heart to beat again or to make him breathe again to bring him back to life. But unfortunately, the child was injured directly in his heart. Ahmed was more than a brother to me. He was my friend. I spent most of my time with him. We used to play football together in the streets and always used to play PlayStation together. We were together most of the time. What happened affected me a lot. I feel my heart is empty. Even yesterday I had my friend visiting me at home and when they wanted to leave I accidentally said, Hamid, Ahmed, show them downstairs. I forgot that he was dead. May his soul rest in peace. I said to myself, we put our trust in God, the best of planners. Near Hamid's home, there's also a sniper outpost. Although a Hamas official initially reported that a helicopter shooting killed Hamid, it's not clear whether it was shrapnel from a sniper or helicopter bullet or even shrapnel from a tank shelling that was responsible. This is just another incident of a suspicious Palestinian child casualty as a result of Israeli force. We were surprised by the injury because there was no bullet. When there's a gunshot, there's an entry wound and an exit wound, but the child had only two very small holes on the right side and the left side of his torso, on both sides of his body. This proves that it was not a gunshot, but shrapnel that killed Hamid due to a shelling, and the shrapnel entered his chest directly. It hit his heart. And when we examined him, we found two very small holes, two millimeters in size on both sides. Here in the hospital, we deal with the children's injuries with our very limited treatment capabilities. Our limited ability is one of our biggest problems because here in the hospital we are suffering from a shortage of the most basic medical supplies.
Mohammed was another boy playing football with Hamid when he was killed. I first spoke to his parents. Hamid was here with us, and then suddenly, in seconds, we were surprised. He was gone. He was dead. My child was with him. I felt bad because my child was in the same place. May Ahmed's soul rest in peace. I asked the international community to stand up for the rights of Gaza's children. No one in this world cares about the children or people here in Gaza. We ask God to finish this occupation, God willing, as soon as possible. May Ahmed rest in peace in heaven. Hamid came to my home and invited me to play football with him. I accepted. Before we left my home, he asked me to take photos of him. So I took photos of him and he asked me to put them on Facebook. After the afternoon prayer, I went to his home and we played football from 3 until 4 p.m. This is Hamid. Suddenly we heard shooting and yelling, and Hamid fell down as he passed the ball. I started screaming, saying, get down, there is shooting. Hamid went to the ground while our other friends ran away. He started crying, and I started calling for his brothers. Then suddenly he stood up, saying, oh, my stomach, my stomach. He started running towards his home, and I screamed to his brother, come, Hamid has been shot. Then he started running around his home, screaming. His brother came and told me to find a car to take him to the hospital. My child, Mohammed, has his exams these days. Whenever I ask him to study hard to succeed, he opens his books and then starts crying. I can't, I can't study. All the time he holds his mobile phone and looks at the photo he took of Hamid. I told him to focus on his studies, to pray, and I said to him, look how God chose Hamid to be a martyr and go to heaven. He was lucky. He always answers, I can't, I can't, because what happened affected me a lot. He's all the time crying and looking at Hamid's photo. Now the boys play with Hamid's football, but without Hamid. Human Rights Watch told me they didn't have the resources in Gaza to investigate the killing of Hamid. Hamid's killing was of course barely reported by Western media agencies. The BBC ran one limited article in which Hamid's killing was reported as just an unverified alleged incident of collateral damage. Days after it killed Hamid, Israel launched its November operation Pillar of Cloud, claiming it was responding to rocket fire from Gazan militant groups. Rocket fire that killed no one. After Hamid's death in the weekend just preceding the operation, Israel killed two more Palestinian children when it struck near a funeral parade in North Gaza. The truth is that the timeline of the recent war started with Israel's killing of Hamid, buried here. This was Hamid's classroom. A memorial wreath stands on his chair. Just before he was killed, he was sitting tests in geography and maths. We all went to school together and went home as a group every day. Every Thursday, we used to play football together. Sometimes he would invite me, sometimes I would invite him. And we used to go out a lot together. My brother was a religious fan of Real Madrid. He used to download the videos of all their games and goals to watch them play. Playing football was his biggest hobby. He always dreamed of becoming a football star. He always pretended he was Cristiano Ronaldo 
and he was killed while he was wearing a Real Madrid t-shirt. Glorious is God. He lived loving football and he died while he was playing it. What can a child care about except his school and having fun? These are the only things children think of. He only cared about wearing his Real Madrid t-shirt, his Real Madrid boots, grabbing his football and then going to play. He did not even really care about his studies. Hamid even said on Thursday morning, I have a big responsibility. I have two exams on Saturday. And Israelis thought that he was thinking about shooting rockets? Hamid's mother was motionless with grief. Some relatives wanted to show me Hamid's bedroom and possessions. His bed, backpack and mobile, his school books, football boots. The t-shirt Hamid was wearing when he was martyred. The weapons they use are unbelievable. We have received many injuries of this kind, not only with children. Ahmed is one of them. They're all the same, very small holes in the chest, stomach, really anywhere in the body, sometimes two holes. But when we resuscitate them and take them to perform surgery, we see shocking damage, including lacerations in the intestines. Wherever the injury is, we see incredible damage. So we saw injuries similar to Ahmed's back during Operation Cast Lead. Since Hamid was killed, in Gaza alone, a further 61 Palestinian children have been killed by Israeli state violence. I went to Hamid's funeral parade. The pupils from his preparatory school arrived. The local police force also paid their respects. I say to the world, you accepted agreements and protocols to protect human rights during wartime and during peacetime, like the Geneva Convention and the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court in The Hague. This international community is sitting silently when it comes to Israeli violations against the Palestinian children and people. They are being killed day and night by the Israelis who think that no power in the world can stop them. To the soldier who shot my son, he has to know that he killed an innocent child. Of course, he has his own children. How would he feel if he saw his son being causelessly killed while he was playing football with his friends? What's the crime he committed? Why are our children being unduly killed in front of their homes? We ask God to end this occupation. I call on President Barack Obama, who just won a second term, the new president of the USA that speaks in the name of freedom, do the American people accept for a child to be killed while he was playing football in front of his home? If this happened there, in America, the whole world would stand against it. If this child has been killed inside Israel, would the state of Israel have stayed silent? Why does the international community continue its silence? This is a massacre of children inside Gaza. The reckless killing or murder of this 13-year-old Real Madrid supporting child constitutes a prima facie war crime committed by the State of Israel. One day the International Criminal Court will call for witnesses. My crew and I will be there. My message to the world and to everyone listening, pay attention to our plight. We're a poor and oppressed people. We have lived 65 years suffering from occupation, killing and colonizing. God willing, people of the world will start to care and put a stop to all of this.
ايش بده بده ايش الرساله يعني اللي ممكن اوجهها ل What can I say to the Israeli soldier who killed my brother? They are not human because they killed a little child playing football. What kind of terrorism did he commit? They say they attacked terrorists and rocket firers. My brother Hamid was playing football, not launching a rocket. They think that when they attack our children, that we will be weakened. It is the opposite. They raise hatred in our hearts. Now, don't you think that Hamid's friends will hate the Israelis more and more? We are like them. We are all humans. What did he do for them to attack him? Those children will grow up and the hate will grow up with them. God willing, the Israelis will leave our land and the occupation will end soon. I swear to God that they will not stay here. The end is coming soon. As a doctor, as a children's surgeon, I want to say that we are a people of peace and that we love peace. And my message to the world is please stand by the people of Palestine so we can live in peace, so our children and their children can live together in peace. Why do the children of the world live in freedom while the children of Palestine do not know the meaning of freedom or sleep peacefully at night? So this is my message, stand by the children and the people of Palestine. We should stop the killing. Visit GazaReport.com for more insight into the situation afflicting Gaza. This film's production was made possible by Gaza Report's funders.